Hey, what's going on, everyone? Dominic, the Primetime Treasure Hunter here. I'm real excited because I just got a call from one of my local sources who works in the comic book and entertainment industry. And so he gets a lot of stuff that's sent to him from some of the big name companies like Diamond Distributors at Marvel and DC. Uh, and so not only does this guy have comic book stuff, but he also has uh, toys that he gets a hold of, posters, he gets uh, t-shirts, uh, all sorts of cool things pop culture types of books. So it's really neat. It's usually a wide assortment of stuff. So we're going to head on over there right now and see what he's got for us this time. Let's see. All right. The deal is done. As you can see, we've got three boxes here. And so uh, it's a lot of good stuff. I can't wait to go through it with you. I paid him $20 per box. So got a total invested here of 60 bucks, but it is well worth it. Uh, let's take it back to Primetime Treasure headquarters, see what we can find there. But uh, before that, I've got to stop off and get some dinner at Dinosaur Barbecue. So here we are in downtown Syracuse heading right over to uh, what is known as Clinton Square. And then we will run into uh, Dinosaur uh, Barbecue right after that. So uh, this is a nice area. There's a skating uh, rink that is over here to the left. Uh, you could see there are some people set up with a little tree. So, you know, not that big. It's not like Rockefeller Center or anything like that, but uh, dinosaurs right up there to the right. All right, so here we go. Dinosaur Barbecue is a nice uh, blues place. It's a biker's type of place. Uh, it is, um, it's a really neat building. Uh, I'll tell you a little bit uh, about the history of it in a moment. All right, so this is the outside of the building from another angle. If we were to go inside, we would see a lot more of these hand-painted murals with dinosaur and barbecue and biker themes on them. That is actually how the waitresses do dress when you're in there. Uh, so maybe one day I'll get a chance to actually take you in there, um, but that will have to be after the uh, pandemic. You could see what the a low number of people outside. There's not a lot of cars out there. This is very unusual for Dinosaur Barbecue. Uh, for anyone who has eaten here, you know that hour or more waits uh, are not unusual at all. We've spent many a night uh, outside on the benches just uh, waiting to get inside of there. Uh, and that's because the food is amazing. Uh, this place is able to survive uh, because it has a really long tradition here in downtown Syracuse. Uh, this building uh, became Dinosaur Barbecue in 1988. Prior to that, it had been a, a Cadillac dealership at one point. It also was a tavern uh, known as NH Tavern. And it was um, uh, opened and expanded even more in 1990 uh, for a full service dining experience. Uh, now, there's a reason for the biker theme uh, that you see there. That's because the main owner, John Stage, and his co-owners, they used to set up at uh, Harley events, biker rallies uh, from 1983 uh, until 1988. And eventually, they just got burnt out from the gypsy lifestyle. And there was a demand for them to also just set up a you know freestanding location like this. And so this is the area they chose in uh, downtown Syracuse. So I really just you know wanted to show you it. Uh, give you a little sense uh, of the history and um, you know just you know kind of show you you know the heart of um, you know an area down here uh, in central New York uh, they've expanded out to other areas but this is the original so uh, let's go in there get some grub and uh, bring it home to PTHQ and I'll show you what all the uh, hype is about now this was really shocking for me to see I did not realize that they were actually closed inside due to covid uh, you just never see this place without people in there it's just tough to see hey daisy hey we're home how you doing hey let's get some food right let's check out that dinosaur barbecue let's go get some all right well here is some of the stuff uh, you can see here we've got some awesome barbecued uh, chicken wings with the devil's dual sauce on it. So nice and hot and spicy. Look at that. Mm. Got a half a rack of ribs. This hamburger looks insane. This is amazing. It's a hamburger with burnt ends on it. So, oh my God, look at that right there. You've got the uh, tomatoes and the onions on it. Nice wet bun. Got the uh, 
Uh, cornbread here, the mac and cheese is my favorite. I love it, and their coleslaw is incredible as well. Uh, Mrs. Primetime with the Mickey ears set up there, so she's got black beans and rice, a big order of mac and cheese, and some coleslaw. And uh, Little Miss Primetime's got a grilled cheese and fries and some coleslaw, but she doesn't want me to show it because uh, that's how private she is. <laughs> this hamburger, by the way, the best name, the Pit Master. Well, that Pit Master was amazing. And now that I'm on a full stomach, we are going to go over what is inside these three boxes. So we've got the BCW comic book box up here. Then there's the DC Fandom box. I'll tell you more about Fandom a little later, but uh, this box mostly has miscellaneous pop culture slash comic collectibles, but they're not comic books in here. And then this bad boy right here, this is mostly filled with pop culture slash comic related t-shirts, hoodies, uh, that sort of thing. Now, to make this more fun and interactive with the audience, what I decided to do this time is to put out a poll in my Facebook group, the Facebook Reselling Resource Center. Uh, the link's down below if you are not a member, and that was how uh, you could vote for which one of these you wanted open first, and then I said I would pick uh, somebody who voted uh, randomly, and we'll do that later on, who could tell me um, which box they want something out of, and I will uh, try to match it to something that you would like and send it out. So there will be a, a prize later as well. So the results are in. So 806 people voted, and 57% of people wanted this opened first. So the shirts was the main interest. So a total of 463 people voted for this. Uh, now, number two was the DC Fandom box. So that was 23% of people, uh, 187 votes for this. And then lastly, uh, this hurts to say, but the comic books came in last. I got to work on getting the comic book love up on this channel, but this came in at 19%. Didn't even hit 20%. Um, 156 votes for this. So next time, I'll probably do the voting through the YouTube channel instead of the Facebook group. This is the first time I tried doing a giveaway on a non-live show, so there's always going to be kinks when you're trying something new. Um, but that's what we have, so let's get into this. Open this bad boy up. All right, so before we dive into this, if you see anything you like, I do offer the items to viewers as an exclusive on a first come first serve basis. So you can let me know either in the comment section down below, you could send me an email to primetime treasure, no S at the end, at gmail.com. You can reach out to me on Instagram at prime underscore time underscore treasure, or you could send me a message through Facebook Messenger uh, if you're in my uh, Facebook group. So let's open this up and see what is in here. So remember, I paid $20 for this box. And our first item here is a really cool uh, tote for the uh, DC Rebirth uh, series, uh, DC Universe. So really cool. Uh, front and back, we've got the DC logo here. I know Pam uh, from Flippin' Hot Finds is probably already drooling over this. So we've got so many different uh, characters on here. It's a really neat uh, piece, so many different uses for it. This one here should sell for right around $20, so I should already get my money back pretty much from just this uh, one item, and then the rest of it would be essentially uh, the profit. So uh, let's see uh, what else we've got here. So this one here is a really cool uh, DC uh, shirt where we've got a whole bunch of uh, superheroes uh, and... I believe we have um, villains in here as well. So superheroes uh, and villains. So this one here would probably also be about a $20 shirt. Uh, by the way, all the shirts in here are extra larges. Uh, I did go through uh, the boxes beforehand just to make this a more uh, efficient uh, presentation for you and have the information ready. Uh, so it would knock down uh, some of the questions that would come in in terms of things like sizes and stuff. So unless I say otherwise, it's an extra large. So that's a, uh, that's a nice one there. 
Uh, so those are comic related ones. Uh, but like I said, there's pop culture ones in there. And when I first pulled this out last night, I could not stop laughing. This is hilarious. So a play on the hostess pies. We've got the mostest, uh, uh, not mostest, the moistest, the moistest uh, fruit pies right there. So um, this is hilarious. I, I, someone's going to just love wearing this just to make kind of a funny statement. And the great thing about this one is that there's no comps for it. And so I could pretty much set the price uh, wherever I want on this one. Uh, I can't wait to get this one listed. Now, this one doesn't actually have a size on it. The tag probably was taken off at some point, but it looks and feels to be an extra large for sure. So, uh, you know, based on everything else in the box, it's an extra large. I always uh, put sizes um, in terms of measurements and stuff in my listings anyway. So if anyone wants the measurements, uh, I will definitely include those. Now, uh, this one here is really neat. This is the Spider-Man uh, number one a Torment shirt. And I'm actually wearing one uh, right now. You've seen me wear this in many of my videos. Um, this shirt is relatively common. The one I'm wearing, it's more of a faded print shirt. Um, but this is very popular because Todd McFarlane did the art. And to, to see it not only colorful like this, but also colorful and just so clearly in the shape of a comic book panel, this one could sell for up to $50. So that's how uh, desirable this shirt is. And especially, you know, with it being designed the way that I mentioned with the colors and the, and the comic uh, page block on it. That's a really nice one. Spider-Man is super popular. Let's go into another a pop culture shirt. And if you are a Twin Peaks fan, you will recognize uh, what this is. If you're not, it will still be learning for you. Uh, this is the fish in the percolator shirt. It's a famous saying uh, from the TV show when Pete tells the agents not to drink the, the coffee because there's a fish in the percolator. And it became a really funny line uh, in the show because, you know, people are just wondering why would there be a fish in the percolator? Like it makes absolutely no sense. No one's probably ever said that uh, in their entire life before. Probably the first time the phrase was uttered. So if you ever see this, it's important to know because this is something that a Twin Peaks fan would pay about $15 to $25 for a shirt like this. And, you know, another reason, another thing that's cool about these types of uh, shirts is that, you know, it kind of brings the uh, community together. You know, you see another Twin Peaks fan where you kind of go up to them, talk to them, say, hey, I was that funny, that show, we loved it. And they kind of bond together with it. So, uh, there you go. Sometimes, by the way, you will see that without it saying the Twin Peaks on it. will just have the logo on there uh, of the fish inside the uh, percolator. And so you would want to know uh, what that meant because, you know, that would help you figure out, hey, that's something I should pick up. Now, this one here appears to be the only one. I don't know if I want to say kids, um, but maybe a, a smaller adult. It's not an extra large. This is made by and this is old. Uh, or at least it looks old from the label. It's a Batman hoodie. Now it's from Ruby's. You probably can't see that too well, but there's a faded Ruby's label. Ruby's always makes the costumes. I've picked up a lot of Ruby's over the years. It's a zip up and it's got the Batman uh, print on the outside. Like it kind of simulates his body. It, it zips up and it does have uh, a hoodie on it. Not only a hoodie, but it's got a hoodie with eye slots, as you can see there, and it has uh, ears as well. So it has the, the bat ears that stick up. So, and, and the zipper does work fine. It's got the utility belt on the back. So it's cool. Uh, I think it probably would fit someone who's a small to medium maybe. Definitely would fit a kid. So if you're interested in it, um, you know, again, let me know. Uh, let's see here. Now, this one, you know, it's kind of a toss up. I'm not sure which one's going to be the more valuable shirt, the Spider-Man one or this. And you need to recognize who this character is. If you ever see him, this is a hoodie. So it's good for this time of the year. It's an, uh, it's an extra large. Let me show you. Let me get this sleeve out here who this is. Uh, this guy right here. And it says, by the way, uh, I hate it here. This is uh, Spider Jerusalem, and you could tell that 
um, from just look at those glasses. He always wears those stereoscopic glasses. One of the lenses is always green and one of them's always red. He's this bald guy. He's like this badass journalist. He's the protagonist in the comic book uh, titled uh, Transmetropolitan. Uh, he is uh, really a popular comic book character. He, even though he's got a you know a kind of like a bad streak to him too, he's still considered a you know a comic book hero character. In fact, uh, IGN has rated him the uh, 45th best superhero uh, character in their uh, in a recent top 100 list. So uh, he is he is popular. He's very hard though to find in any kind of clothing. So especially a hoodie. So here you can see the, the hoodie right here. It, it doesn't have anything printed on the back, but it definitely makes a, it definitely makes a statement for, sh for sure. Uh, so uh, we'll see what happens with this. I cannot wait uh, to get this one listed. Um, it'll probably be one of, my, uh, one of my first ones to list. Now for Guardians of the Galaxy fans, uh, here we go. Uh, if you like uh, Star Lord right there, we've got this one. There's a Star Lord jersey. Um, the interesting thing about uh, about this one, which is, is the Yeah Baby shirt, uh, it has it is only apparently available right now from China. And you know it's hard to get stuff in from uh, from China right now due to there's a lot of restrictions with the pandemic, and the prices are all over the board from like 18 to 46 dollars. But there's a lot of people who and you can see it, it's long sleeve. People don't. A lot of people don't want to get stuff that comes from China. They'll actually filter it in from USA only. So I would be the only one selling this from the USA. I actually will put that uh, in my listing so people know it's USA only. Now, the person who I got this from, I told you he works in the, um, in the comic book industry. He does journalism. And so this is not really a comic shirt per se, but it is a, it is a journalism a hoodie basically it's a nice black hoodie as you could tell this person likes stuff that's black so if you like black this is definitely the video for you uh, i know this might be hard to read from far away but i'll just read it for you um it says and by the way this is another spider jerusalem uh hoodie as you could tell right here now he doesn't have the the glasses on but he doesn't always have glasses so that's two spider jerusalem hoodies here which is really cool this, this is going to be a valuable box um uh, for sure uh, the, the character Spider Jerusalem, he is a, a journalist. And so it says here, journalism is just a gun. It's only got one bullet in it. But if you aim it right, that's all you need. Aim it right and you can blow a kneecap off the world. So it's another type of a statement shirt. So really cool, especially uh, if you are into uh, journalism or know anyone who is. So that's a cool, cool one here. Uh, this is a fairly generic shirt in terms of there's not anything real uh, fancy on it, but it's a Daily Planet uh, shirt so uh, from, from Superman. But it does say press on the back, uh, which is pretty cool. Um, there were no comps on this that I could see. And when there's not any comps on these types of shirts, what I just estimate is that they're 10 to $20 shirts. So you know, that, that would basically be my thought uh, going into it. Uh, there's a couple of shirts that are, uh, from the comic book series, uh, Harbinger, uh, through Valiant. It says Valiant on the back. These don't excite me too much. Uh, you're really going to have to be a fan of Harbinger to, 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 uh, to enjoy, uh, this shirt, obviously. But, uh, this is going to be less popular than the other ones, uh, from the main, uh, comic book, uh, series lines. Uh, here is a Bloodshot, which is more popular than Harbinger, especially uh, since the movie came out with uh, Vin Diesel. Uh, this one uh, has the um, a logo uh, again on the back. Uh, this one, you know, maybe I could get 20 bucks out of this one. Maybe if I'm if I'm lucky. So, you know, we'll see what happens with that one. Uh, this one here, if you like DC characters, uh, we've got a whole bunch of different uh, logos uh, in here. So what you'll see here, uh, we've got Superman. Uh, up top, then we've got Batman in the middle. Um, we've got a uh, Flash, Wonder Woman, and then uh, over here we've got uh, Cyborg, and below that is Aquaman's symbol. So it's important to know your symbols because, as you can see, 
they're not always going to say in words what they are. So it's just an important thing to learn, uh, just kind of like that fish in the percolator that I showed you uh, uh, earlier. So uh, that's important. Uh, let's see, we've got more shirts in here. This is a very generic shirt. Uh, it just says, it's from Valiant again, it says Unity on it. This one will probably be a hard one to sell. So, you know, that's probably, I'd say, the least valuable uh, shirt that's in there. Uh, let's see what else we've got here. Now, this one, I really like this one. This one is The Thing and a whole bunch of other um, uh, Marvel heroes here. And as you can see here, they are playing uh, cards and they're doing some gambling there. So uh, a really neat shirt. I love this one. Uh, good one to wear in the man cave. So... Uh, we've got that. Uh, really neat. I love these shirts. They're just so cool. Uh, this one, too, if you're Guardians of the Galaxy fan. Uh, I've got uh, another one here with all of them uh, right there um, in, the, uh, in the circle there. So that's another really cool shirt. Guardians of the Galaxy. Let's see what else we've got here. Uh, this one's fairly generic. This one is just a, a Superman a logo shirt. That's it. Not much to say about that. Nothing on the uh, back. My gosh, I think almost everything I've pulled out of here is black so far. Very few uh, exceptions. All right, now, a lot of people always ask how to pronounce this. It's not Dark Seed, it's Dark Side. So just think of Star Wars. Uh, but it's not Star Wars. Uh, Dark Side is a DC uh, character. And um, he's basically like the DC version of Thanos, if you watch the Avengers movies. And he's very popular. Uh, so uh, people would love to just wear something like this just to say dark side is right there Just a statement shirt right there. Nice cool Black dark side shirt. All right, let's see what else we've got here black panther fan speaking of black. We've got a black uh, panther uh, Face logo shirt right there. Nothing on the back. Just uh, that right there. So another kind of Statement shirt right there. Just just wearing that and I think we've got two more left. So hang on what we've got here Okay, now this is neat. So this is the DC fandom shirt I'll explain more about DC fandom when we go into the next box, but uh, This one here. These are actually uh, difficult to find uh, the fandom shirts uh, This one it's it's challenge so challenging to find people uh, might pay up to around 50 bucks for this shirt just to have it since it was a recent uh, experience that DC uh, put on. Again, it makes more sense to talk about it when I open the next box. Uh, and then this one here, this is the uh, Shazam shirt. So if you're a Shazam uh, fan, you know, again, this one would be more towards the 10 to $15 range. So, okay. So that is all of the shirts. I'm going to put them away. And now we're going to go through the DC fandom box. All right, so time to get into the DC Fandom box. Now, if you have not heard of DC Fandom, uh, basically what happened is that the annual San Diego Comic Convention, also known as SDCC, was canceled this year for the in-person event. That is the most famous comic book convention uh, in the United States, if not the world, and they moved it to an online virtual event. And so DC Comics got the idea of doing their own virtual convention. And so they filmed a lot of stuff for it in June, and they did a 24-hour streaming event. People had to buy tickets to watch it online. There were, <laughs> there were millions of people watch it. You can see here's the date, 8-22-20. Uh, so they did a 24-hour event. Then they also did one uh, in September as well. So I had things like interviews with, uh, you know, people, uh, you know, from uh, movies coming out, from people who work in DC Comics, a lot of promotional events, giving people, um, you know, advance information of things coming out in the future with their favorite comic books and stuff. So it was really cool, and it was uh, really very popular. And so anything surrounding the term DC fandom with the logo on it is still very popular. So just the box, by the way, I probably could sell just the box. Now, these were basically press kits that they sent out to people uh, ahead of time to get ready uh, for the event and to get ready for their filming. And so this person who I got this from being a, a journalist, he actually uh, got one of these uh, kits. And the, the top here is cool. Like this is like made of like a hard plastic or might even have like some wood in it. So it's, it's nice and sturdy, nice and strong box. So I don't know, I might just, uh, I might sell the box. 
So inside, uh, let's see, what do we got? Well, we have a DC Fandome hat. Now, believe it or not, even though this does not look really fancy, a DC Fandome hat, new with the tags on it, sells for about $80. Now, this is not new with tags. Um, it doesn't feel like it has been used before, so I think it is new just without tags. So minimum, I should be able to get $20 out of the hat, which again, just, you know, that alone will pay for the stuff that's inside of this box. So that's that. Uh, there's one other hat in here. This is a Star Laboratories hat. So this is also from DC. Uh, this could go maybe for around 15 bucks or so. This one is used though. So the person I got it from must have worn this uh, for a little bit. So we'll see what happens with that one. Got to clean it up just a little bit. Uh, there, there are a couple of posters in here. Now this one is a DC Fandome poster. I'm not sure if I'll be able to do anything with this or not. Maybe I will because it still does say DC Fandom on it. It does have a few dings here or there. So I'll probably try to sell it and uh, we'll see what happens with it. So there's a Fandom uh, a poster and it just basically you know shows different things that they were talking about during the event. So that's that one. Uh, let's see here. In terms of a bag, uh, we've got a Bill and Ted's uh, adventures bag. I'm not sure in terms of comps on this. Again, it's black. There's so much black stuff this person likes. Uh, there's a few things inside of here. I don't even know what this is. AP Bio. It looks like it's just something random from like school, you know, AP Bio class. So I, I don't, I don't even think this is related to anything. So we'll just throw that over there. <laughs> I don't know what that is. Um, we do have a Funko Pop in here. Unfortunately, it's not one that really has a lot of value. It's from the TV series uh, Winona Earp. Uh, so, you know, you'd be lucky to get 10 bucks out of this Funko. Now, you have to be careful with Funkos because I always told you, and I haven't talked about Funkos in a while, but there's certain Funkos that have a sticker on it, which there's one for Winona Earp, there's a chase sticker. That means people are trying to chase it, trying to find it because there's something different about her outfit in it that one would be a valuable one. And some Funkos are actually signed. So if someone takes this Funko and gets it signed by her, then that all of a sudden becomes a really valuable Funko Pop. This comes in a protective case, so that's cool. I'll just put it to the side and combine it with something else one day. Uh, this is a toy we've got from DC, from the DC Multiverse. Uh, this one here is uh, the character, The Ray. And so he's not that popular of a character. So this one, yeah, it's made by Mattel, might be able to get around 15 bucks uh, for this for this toy right here, new uh, in the package. So if anyone likes the Ray, let me know. Uh, we've got some random coasters here. Uh, so this is a George Lopez coaster. I'd probably just sell all these together in one lot. This one is the King of Queens. I love this one, this is my favorite. I used to grow up watching the Carol Burnett show late at night. Shout out to all the Carol Burnett fans right there. Uh, awesome show, I loved it. So we've got a Carol Burnett one. Everybody loves Raymond. So if you're a big TV fan, you might like these. Uh, this is a 30 Rock one over here. And then this one here is Parks and Rec uh, one, JJ's Diner right there with the waffle on it. So we've got a bunch of uh, random stuff thrown in there. So not everything in here is gonna be DC. But like I said, there, there is some randomness to it. Uh, in fact, this one is actually a Marvel one. This is a Marvel comic. It's a shorter digest. Uh, this is a custom edition. Now, this one uh, actually does uh, pretty well. Uh, the cheapest you could find this one for right now online is 20 bucks. So, and that's not bad for a small little, little digest. Again, if that one sold for 20, that, that also pays for the box. Uh, a random DVD in here, uh, Officer Down. So this is a Blu-ray, by the way. So it's always good to find Blu-rays, but not all Blu-rays are worth a lot of money. If the movie's not that popular, it doesn't matter if it's in Blu-ray or not. This is not a real desirable movie. Just like this is not a real desirable book. This hockey one, if you're a hockey fan and you want a hockey themed uh, comic type of book, you know, I've got this, I could, I could get you. Uh, so, you know, sometimes you're gonna find stuff like that when you're buying things in lots. That's the thing, you're gonna get these pieces that aren't worth a lot, but then you're gonna get the stuff in there that um, you know, could pay for your box, and then you're gonna get the hopefully hidden gem uh, in there. And so let's see what else we've got here. 
Now this is called a form of a question. This is a hardcover book. And the thing I want you to pay attention about this is it's a review copy, so it says not for resale. Sometimes they're called advanced copies. Now, this one does not sell without it being an advanced copy, but there are many examples of things that will sell for much, much higher when it has an advanced copy sticker on it uh, versus you know if it doesn't. So we'll just have to see what happens, uh, what happens with this one. So uh, let's see. Uh, we've got some posters here. Let's see what poster we've got over here. Actually, let me show you this one second. Hold on here. We've got this poster here. Because this one, I would say, this is the less valuable of the two posters. And I'll tell you how I know that in a moment. I don't even have to look it up to tell you. This is a Green Arrow poster. Now, this is for the TV show. You can see there on the bottom, so it's a promotional poster. I have a Green Arrow poster up right now in my eBay store, and it has been sitting there for a long time. I've had it priced between like $14.99 and $19.99. It's different than this one. It's actually nicer, and it just has not moved. So um, this one probably would sit for a while as well. I'll fold this up again later. I don't want to ruin it. Uh, but this one, this one is definitely a better poster, and I'll tell you why right here when we open it up i've talked about this before with with comic books is that whenever you see something that has tons of comic book characters on it that is going to sell well because there's just so much to visually look at and this is from valiant so even though it's not from marvel or from dc it has the you know the names of, of the titles of the comic book on there you can see bloodshot is right there uh, in the center, for example, uh, this is cool. This one would would easily sell for fifteen to twenty bucks, easy. So uh, that that's a great poster right there. That one comes from nineteen ninety three. So nice one there. Um, Valiant uh, here. That's another comic book uh, company, by the way. So open this up. We've got a draft that says SDCC draft for Bloodshot. Uh, problem is, you know, they they gave these out at the uh, at the at the convention a lot of people have them it's not like really that exclusive because there's just so many of them that were made and it's not really that valuable because so i would just take that by the way and combine that with other bloodshot comic books now be careful when you get stuff like this this is a little uh, membership uh, card for the dc universe online now annual membership uh, for dc universe online where you could read digital comics and get all sorts of information that costs you 75 bucks a year and this here would get you complimentary access for that. But there's a code on the back. Make sure you're checking your codes before you're sending anything like this. This was used. So the only thing I'm going to be able to use this for is the box in shipping something out. So can't use the card. Be very careful. Don't assume that these things are blank. Now, um, this one is interesting. This one is a Spider-Man print and it's signed by Edward Yang. Now, I know of the Edward Yang who's involved in making movies, but I don't think that's who this is. Yet, I don't know of a famous comic book artist but named Edward Yang, and it says EY right on here. So it's hand signed by him. Um, it's Spider-Man, so it should have some value. I can't find any other example of it right now. So this one right now is a mystery. If you happen to know anything about the Edward Yang who signed this, I'd be really curious because uh, I have not been able to find anything yet. Uh, for those of you who are Ghostbusters fans or those of you like Thrifty Esme who are Star Trek fans, we have two books here from Nerd Search. So these are cool. Uh, kids would love them. Uh, even adults would like them too. They're really cool activity books uh, about the uh, about the show or about the movie. Some of the pages are in color, and some are in black and white. And they have all these activities that you do, like for example, you know, find the things in the scene that don't make any sense. So stuff like that. And uh, again, activities to do. These are new. No one has um, you know colored anything in or written in them at all. Uh, these could go for about 15 bucks uh, a piece. So, you know, we'll see. I, I don't think, I don't think I'd lot them together, even though they're both by Nerd Search, because 
you don't necessarily like Ghostbusters if you like Star Trek. I mean, some obviously do. I'd probably combine this with other Star Trek items and this with other Ghostbusters items, unless anyone was interested in it by itself. Uh, this one here, this is sealed. This is 007 uh, 50 greatest Bond cars. So how cool is that? To have this thing uh, new and sealed includes uh, No Time to Die uh, as well. This one, not sealed, sells easily for about 20 to 25 bucks. So we'll see what happens with that one. Then we've got a few more books in here. This one is The Escapist, and it is unfortunately a library book. It wouldn't even have value, really, if it wasn't in a library book format. But uh, this one here, it's just going to you know, be something I'll probably just wind up donating. I don't donate too many things, but, uh, you know, this here, uh, it probably will be a donation. Uh, now let's see, this is interesting. I don't usually like dealing with library books. Um, uh, but Katie reads, uh, tells me she has had experience with some of them selling, has a bunch of stickers on here, which I would want to pull off. But the thing that interests me about it is it's about the move. Well, about, it's about Fletch. I said movie because Many of you remember growing up in the 80s watching Fletch with Chevy Chase. This is a 1980s book. Uh, inside, it's pretty good. It's got a few library stamps uh, on the front of it. Uh, but this book, the cheapest I could find it right now online is $44. That's not in a library book format. So this would obviously sell for less than that. Uh, we'll see if someone would be willing to buy it uh, with it being um, you know, something that has the library lamination over it and stuff. We'll see. So Fletch right there, shout out to all the Fletch fans. And this, I think, is probably the gem inside of here. I'm not 100%. We'll have to see what happens with it. But it's High Moon. Now, if you remember in the past, I actually found a High Moon shirt when I purchased something from this same uh, individual. Uh, so the High Moon t-shirt, um, this, this comic book series is popular. It's a werewolf-based one. Uh, you could actually, well, you could see the werewolf there on the bottom. Sorry, my ring light's getting in there. And you could see it uh, back here. Now, it has a slip cover on it. And this is why you've always got to check inside of these books. Well, this is what it looks like. It opens up this way. Nice and bright and colorful. But when I open it up, what you can see here is we've got multiple signatures by the people who made the book right here. Uh, and it was signed and sent directly to the person who I purchased this from. So having it multiply signed is really awesome. And this is in great shape. It's a really cool looking book, displays nicely. And uh, that's everything in this box. So we've got one more to go through, the comic book box. All right, so time to open up this box of comic books and see what's inside of here. I know, I know, most of you are not interested in what is inside of here, uh, but as you know, this is my main passion is comic books. And so I try to pass on some tips uh, for you here and there because even if you're not into it, you may come across a box of comics like this and it's helpful to know some of the things to look for uh, that could have some value and some things that really won't have much uh, value. So this is something I think that a lot of people would pass up because they're not familiar with the title, The Wrong Earth. They're not familiar with the characters, Dragonfly Man and Stinger. And they're not familiar with the company that made these comics, Ahoy Comics, because they came out in 2018. Now, Ahoy Comics tried to distinguish themselves in the beginning by uh, adding a lot of text to the back of the comic book, stories, um, a lot of prose, um, you know, production notes, that type of stuff. And, you know, people really like that. And so this series also became popular. And with it being the first series put out by Ahoy, there's a total of six of them. Having all six of them right here uh, is something that, you know, has some value to it. So having all six, and these are all in near mint condition, uh, they sold recently for $30.00. There's only one set up right now for $48, so I would hope to get between $30 and $48 just for these six comic books right here. And so that would put me in profit right there for this entire uh, box. So, And this, by the way, is a short box of comics, uh, not the longer boxes that I've uh, shown you. Now, in a recent video, I showed you the title uh, Extreme Justice, and it was just one of them. Uh, this is all 19 in the series, uh, came out in the 1990s, 
And it's basically a spin-off of the Justice League series. The problem with this series is that there's a lot of characters in here who are just not the main characters that you all love from the regular Justice League, like, you know, Wonder Woman and Batman and Superman, that type of stuff. You have, like, what I would call middle-of-the-road characters, like Captain Adam and, um, you know, who do we got? Booster Gold and Amazing Man. Like, these are people that, you know, characters that, again, they're just not as iconic as the main Justice League character. So DC ended this off and then went to JLA and brought back the main uh, Justice League characters that everybody knows. Um, this starts at number zero, goes all the way to 18, so it's a total of 19 bucks. These right here, it's a complete set. Um, you can even see here it says complete series. At the time, it had a price tag of $25 on it. Right now, the going rate for something like this is about 35 bucks. So um, again, I'll be, they're all in near mint condition. Really happy with, uh, with that right there. Um, this is cool for all you Batman fans. This is a very popular one right now. Uh, Cursed Comics number one. Uh, it's got a nice horror theme. Anything horror related is great. Uh, this is a nice little, um, like a one shot uh, kind of book here. It's a nice thicker 80 page uh, book. So that's a good one. And then we've got another Batman one called Crimes of Passion. Individually, they're probably like $10 books or so. Uh, we talked about DC uh, Rebirth uh, earlier, which is when uh, basically DC kind of just revamped their line of characters yet again. That was in 2016. I remember going to the comic book shops every week and whenever the uh, new DC uh, Rebirth titles would come out and they produced multiple covers, I picked them up every single week. I went for like over a year. And so I have all of them in my own collection, including this one. Uh, this one right here, the max that this would go for is the wraparound cover, would be about $16. So if you ever see that one right there, sorry, I know there's a little bit of a glare on there. And I, this one isn't really worth that much in and of itself. I'd probably put it in with a lot of uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle stuff or Batman stuff, but it's Batman Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles right there, near mint condition, like a sketch cover with some coloring on it. That's cool. Now this one here, I'm not showing it to you because it has any particular value. I just want to familiarize you with a term that you might see on some comic books. This is called, I know it's far away, but on top it says director's cut on it. Now you might be familiar with director's cuts from you know movies and stuff where they'll show some deleted scenes and things like that from the originals. There's really, that's not really the same thing with comic books per se. These are all reprints. So that already takes some of the value down when they're reprints. But for a comic book fan, things that they'll really love that they'll add in the back of the book are all these production notes and commentaries by uh, writers and editors. So it will have the, you know, the original uh, comic book or, uh, you know, the panels uh, right here. Sometimes it might alter them. Uh, a bit to show like how they were originally sketched out. Uh, but that's what a director's cut is, if you ever see that. I just wanted you to be familiar with it. It doesn't necessarily mean that it's something that has um, uh, additional value to it. Now, another thing you should be on the lookout for, uh, if you could you know, find them in multiples, is this here, which is called the Grand Design Series. What uh, Marvel decided to do is to come out with comic books that had that old school feel to it that I used to love, which is that newspapery um, type of print inside of it. Those types of newspapery pages, not the glossy, shiny pages, which I really don't like. I like the old school version. Uh, and they put these nice, it has like a nice kind of matted finish on it, and it has more panels, more colorful panels that are compressed inside. So that's the uh, Grand Design Series. Uh, they're popular individually. You're not necessarily gonna get a lot out of one book, but if you had a, a bunch of them together, that's where you could get some value. Uh, another character I want you to pay a lot of attention to, especially if you find them in, in bulk, is Savage Dragon. Savage Dragon stuff is, a dish, is, is becoming more and more difficult to find. Uh, this one here isn't really worth anything because you can see it's damaged on the back, so I would just put this in a damaged comic book lot. It's a shame because it's number two. But as I have told you before, if you're going to buy things in bulk, you're going to get some damage. Uh, fortunately, there's not uh, much by way of damaged stuff. Uh, in this lot. That's one of the few things that did come damaged. Uh, Stranger Things, 
Uh, a lot of you uh, love Stranger Things. Watched it when it was on Netflix. I think they had a halt production because of the pandemic. But there's three uh, Stranger Things comic books in here. One of them is paired with uh, D&D. So that's cool. Now this one is uh, uh, Terry Moore. And it's uh, Motor Girl. Now that's not necessarily popular in and of itself. Uh, but be on the lookout for Terry Moore stuff. If you see the Strangers in Paradise series, that's popular. The other thing, I opened it up. And inside... We've got a signature by Terry Moore. So that is cool. Uh, that should definitely add value to this book and make it, uh, make it sellable, whereas otherwise, that would be a tough one uh, to move. Uh, this is another uh, trade paperback here called Firepower. Uh, this is about someone who traveled to China to learn about his birth parents uh, and eventually leads him to this mysterious uh, Shaolin temple. Uh, so, you know, I don't know. You need someone specifically looking for that one to sell. It's not super popular in and of itself. Uh, neither is this one here, Augusta Wind, but it's really cool. The cover, it's a nice hard cover. The back is really neat here. Uh, this one would probably go for a max of about 17 bucks. So uh, this is another one to look out for. Not that it's popular uh, in and of itself, but you need to know what the annotated series is. So uh, in the back, they have a lot of, um, again, like production notes and stuff about the comic book. So it's, it's cool. Um, little captions and stuff that have, you know, little basically sections that would relate to something in the front of the book and tell you more about it. So here would be a good example right here. They'll refer you back to some of the panels in the front of the book, and then they'll describe things about it, tell you why the panels came out that way. You know, this is not worth anything significant in and of itself, but if you had a bunch of the annotated, that's how it would work. Like, here's another annotated one uh, right here. So you try and uh, bulk them uh, together. This is a, a fan zine, um, not fan zine, fan zine. Uh, this is by Dave Baker. Uh, this is a little series here called This Is Not a Girl Gang. It's about these two girls that uh, decide to plan a trip in March. Uh, to the Grand Canyon and they don't realize that it's freezing and uh, all kind of mishaps happen along the way. They're not really worth a lot. Um, this one sold for like five bucks when it first came out. This one for eight bucks. So, you know, who knows? Maybe like $9.99 free shipping or something like that. Uh, this one is Uncle Sam. It's a trade paperback. Um, Alex Ross was involved in it. I'm only pointing it out so you are aware of Alex Ross stuff. Anything with Alex Ross on it, at least look into it. That book in and of itself doesn't have much value. I combine it with other Alex Ross stuff. I've got a few Superman comic books uh, inside of here, as you can see, which I'll just add to my other Superman lot. And then a bunch of just random books uh, that I'm showing you right here, Assassin's Creed. Not anything else in here is something that has significant uh, value uh, individually. Again, these are gonna be things I'm gonna need to lot together. Here you can see there's two cyberpunks and these are made by Dark Horse. So what I do in situations like this is I'll just make a big Dark Horse comic lot and I'll take all the Dark Horse random comic books and put them together and sell them that way. I just got a couple ElfQuest, uh, vintage ElfQuest books and I could just throw this in there and just make it something additional that adds some value for the person. Uh, here's another random comic book here. Here's another Terry Moore. So yeah, it looks like a random book, but I could just add these to the other Terry to that other Terry Moore book I showed you that was signed. So that's how I do it. Got to come up with creative ways to get rid of these things that don't have value individually. That'll just sit forever. Uh, there's a Frankenstein one. I get lots of Frankenstein horror stuff. I could just toss that in there. Someone will want that. Gen 13 is a popular series. I would just throw that in with my other Gen 13 stuff. Another popular series to look out for is Hellboy. So there's a random Hellboy comic book. Hidden Society. Metal Men. There's another Metal Men book that I have coming up, I think, later. Mr. Miracle. As you can see, I alphabetize these. We're almost done. Uh, there's going to be some in bulk that you're going to see here in a moment. Norse Mythology by Neil Gaiman. Uh, he's very popular. I've talked about him before. It's a random book here. So a bunch of random stuff. For me, it makes sense though, because again, I have so many comic books that I could just, you know, find these, match them up, make lots like here, some random Spider-Man books. Here's Spider-Man with Gen 13. So I could just add that to the Gen 13 comic. Spy Island. And then here, 
I've got a whole lot of uh, steel comic books. So I'll show you this here. This is all the characters steel. Most of them are consecutive. It goes from issue zero. I won't pull them all out, but they're all steel comics. Now, there is an older steel comic book series from the 70s that would have some value. Unfortunately, these just don't have much value. Even in bulk, they're really hard to sell off. You're going to see it a lot. Whenever you go through comic boxes, you're usually going to see steel. They overproduced it, and that's exactly why they wind up being in this box here. So, uh, good and bad. I mean, good in the sense that I'd actually rather have a bunch of the same title than have a bunch of random books that I need to organize, so it saves me a little bit of time. Um, but I wish it was a different series, so that's a little disappointing to find that much steel in there. Um, now, Superboy, I could always do stuff with Superboy. Even though it's not as popular as Superman, there's a lot of Superboy uh, titles that are in here. And I have tons of Superboy comic books, and I would just add these and make a nice Superboy lot for somebody. So we're almost done. Just a few more. I'll just show you these because I know there are some Superboy fans out there, people who love the, uh, the TV show and stuff, who might just want to see some of the titles that were inside of here. All right, we're almost done. Uh, here is uh, Titans, DC Titans. So we've got some of that. DC Titans again. Young Heroes in Love. Young Heroes in Love. These are DC titles. Multiple Young Heroes in Love. Here's some more. I think these are all Young Heroes in Love. Nope, X-Ray and Captain Victory. This is damaged though. Even if it wasn't damaged, it's basically a pretty worthless comic book. So I would just add this into like a scrapping lot for somebody who wants to take comic book panels out and scrap with them. And this Superman book was also, uh, yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty damaged. It's got a, a, an unsightly crease going across the top. But uh, again, someone will just buy it just for the panels and to, to scrap with it. So that's the box. And now let's do the giveaway. All right, so here you can see I have a random number generator from 1 to 806 because that's how many people voted. Now, I am going to uh, click the generate button in a moment, and then I'll go over to the area where the poll was in the Facebook group, and I will manually count up from the beginning to whatever number it is that was generated, and that's uh, who will be the winner. Now, unfortunately, I'm going to have to disregard uh, some of the numbers that I handed out here. And again, just do it on a manual count because you, as you can see here, some people wound up getting skipped. So we have 43 and 44 and then a skip person in between. That's because so many people voted that I was having a hard time keeping up with it. And based on how fast I was responding and handing out numbers, Facebook temporarily restricted my account so I couldn't hand numbers out anymore. So I just made an announcement we do it manually. So that's how it's going to go, and it's going to be based on how I see it on my page. It might show up differently on other pages. There's no conspiracy here. Um, you're just going to have to trust me uh, based on what you know of me from my channel over the last few years. Next time, what I'll do is I will try to do some type of YouTube uh, comment picker. So... You know that will just be an easier way uh, to just to just do it. Um, that's how a lot of other uh, channels do it, and that will also allow for people who are not on Facebook to also take part. So sorry for the few people who uh, couldn't get involved in it that way. So okay, let's hit the generate button and see who we've got. We have got number one thirty one. So let me go over to one thirty one and uh, see who that is. All right, so it turns out that based on my calculations here and uh, adding this up and double checking it, that Gail Cook is actually number 131. So Gail, make sure that you contact me. I'll reach out to you as well if I don't hear from you. Let me know what box you want something from and the types of things uh, that you like and I will uh, pick something out of there that matches your interest and send it to you. You just need to send me your address. I will cover uh, shipping and everything. You don't have to pay anything. And uh, because I feel bad that I screwed this whole thing up, uh, I am also going to uh, give something away to Katie Morgan, the original uh, 131. I feel bad for someone to have their number picked and then they find out they don't win anything. So I'm going to also give something away to Katie. Uh, go check out Katie, by the way. I interviewed her 
uh, a few uh, weeks ago. We did a show about books and reselling books. So she's awesome. So uh, I'll be in touch with uh, Katie and I'm sure she's going to be happy she won. So same thing, Katie, just let me know what box you want something uh, from and I will uh, send it out to you. All right, everyone. Well, I hope you had fun with the video. Don't forget to let me know what your favorite item was down below. Also, let me know if you like that new uh, far away uh, type of display presentation where you could see me, you know, from a broader uh, view, more of a far away angle uh, on the table, just trying out uh, something new. And also let me know if you like this whole uh, more interactive format of a little giveaway thrown in with selecting how I do something in the video. That might be something I do more of next year, but it all depends on your response. Uh, one thing is for sure, I am not going to do any more videos on how to combine shipping. <laughs> so anyway, all right, folks, I'll see you at the next one. Take care. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Daisy, you are so cute right now. You're resting those paws on me. I love that. That's so cute. Let's hang out. It's been a long day. Let's just chill out now.